Good morning. Uh, Campbell McCreary here at Amvest Capital in New York City. Welcome to the Amvest Capital Live webinar with Arcana Silver Corporation. Uh, Arcana trades on the venture as AUN, Alpha Utah, Nevada, and AUNFF, Alpha Utah, Nevada, Foxtrot, Foxtrot on the OTCQX. Hope you'll enjoy today's program. It will also be available in replay mode. Uh, do feel free to chat in your questions in the question pane of GoToWebinar or simply email them in and we'll uh, ask them right now. Uh, any question, um, please. Uh, Amvest is a New York-based specialist investment management and corporate finance firm focused solely on the natural resource uh, sector. And uh, all important disclaimer, um, this call is most definitely uh, for informational purposes only. I'm um, very pleased to have with us today, Kevin Drover, uh, President and CEO of Arcana, and uh, Brian Briggs, the COO. Um, Kevin uh, has over 40 years of both domestic and international experience uh, in operations, project development, management, and process re-engineering with both developing and producing companies. Uh, previously and, and most recently, um, COO of Glencairn, responsible for two gold mining operations located in Latin America. And prior to Glencairn, he was the vice president of operations uh, for Kinross. Um, then to uh, Brian, uh, Kevin's left, or, or his right, <laughs> uh, is Brian, professional engineer with 30 years of experience in the mining space, both underground and surface mine exploration and operation. Uh, he's done everything from exploration, feasibility, and construction uh, through to production. So all uh, relevant uh, things today. And Kevin, uh, if you want to put that in full screen mode, I'm going to uh, bow out and uh, take us through and update us. But uh, cover the fundamentals of, of Arcana, please, in the next 15 or 20 minutes. And then we'll uh, grill you guys with the questions. Thank you. Right on. Well, thank you, Campbell. Much appreciated, uh, and thanks everybody for uh, for coming and attending. Uh, as uh, Campbell introduced, uh, Brian uh, Brian is here with me. He's COO of Orcana, but he's also CEO of or of uh, Ure Silver, and he's uh, lived and breathed the uh, Revenue Virginia's uh, uh, project down here for uh, quite a number of years. And um, we're going to tag team a little bit. Uh, on the presentation here, uh, I'm going to give you a general overview of the company itself and what we're doing, where we're going. Um, and Brian is going to give you some uh, history on the revenue once we drill down into the uh, into that uh, that side of it, the revenue Virginia's mine. Uh, he'll give you a bit of a background on the uh, on the history of it and where we are today and on the exploration upside. Uh, so let's uh, move right ahead. Um, just talking a little bit about the, uh, the the projects themselves. We're obviously a silver company. We have two projects. Uh, we have the Shafter project uh, located near uh, Shafter, Texas, uh, which is not far from Marfa, Texas, some of you may know. Uh, it is fully permitted, most recently in production in 2013. Uh, it uh, it has a 1,500 ton a day mill that's um, uh, in excellent shape. It's been on care and maintenance. It is at a PEA level. Uh, it still requires some uh, infill drilling um, and uh, a feasibility study. And some of you may know we just uh, recently initiated a um, um, uh, an equity offering, and one of the uses of proceeds for that is to uh, is to speed up uh the uh the, the the shaft of work that we need to do the technical work we're in a, a silver bull market uh, at the moment we'd like to be able to take advantage of that and uh and not delay uh some of the work that we've got uh, a plan for shafter but to initiate some of that uh and uh, take advantage of uh, what we hope to be uh, higher silver prices going forward we have the revenue virginia's mine uh located uh near uray colorado uh, and that's about a seven hour drive, uh, depending on uh, how you drive. <laughs> Others do it in five hours, uh, takes me nine, but uh, it's not far from Denver, easy to get to. It's a 30 minute flight, uh, maybe even less from Denver to Montrose. Uh, we have a county road that goes right by our uh, facility. 
and uh, we're putting this one uh, into production right now. It's our flagship. Uh, it is fully permitted. We need nothing to go into production. Uh, and uh, there's a mill built uh, infrastructure, everything in place. Um, so we have two projects, both in continental United States. Um, we're fully permitted for production at both. We just recently closed a $28 million debt facility with McCurrier. Uh, and that gave us pretty much full funding to uh, get to production at the Revenue Virginia's mine. Our management team is complete. Uh, myself, I, I've moved down to URA and I'm actually sitting in URA right now. Uh, Brian is here. Our general manager, Mike Lee, is here. Uh, we've hired uh, you know, our mill, uh, mill superintendent, all of our mill people, our mine people. So we have the full management uh, um, uh, team in place right now. Uh, the Revenue Virginia's mine is a precious metals mine with a base metal credit. Uh, we produce a lead and a zinc uh, concentrate. Uh, gold and silver primarily go with the lead. Uh, zinc is a, a small amount of the, uh, of the revenue that comes from it, but we do make two products. Uh, the feasibility study on this project was completed in uh, 2018, uh, the, the most recent one, and that was done by SRK Engineering. We internally updated it as recently as June of 2020. Um, we're low cost to production as per the feasibility study. Uh, we're $8 an ounce on a, a silver equivalent basis. If you take the base metals and, and uh, take that as a credit to cost, uh, or sorry, as a, a silver equivalent, then we're right at about $11 an ounce. So we're, we're in the low uh, end of the spectrum when it comes to production costs here. We do have, uh, this is an existing mine. There's been a tremendous amount of uh, development done over the years. There's a mile and a half underground access tunnel. This is uh, 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 track mining, a narrow vein. The mill is in place. It was built in, I believe, 2012. It's uh, essentially brand new. All the infrastructure is in place, power, water, roads, uh, et cetera. And, and I guess the, the other thing, to, two other things to say of this, about this project really is the, this is a very high grade project and we have significant upside uh, uh, to extend the life of this mine. Our current mine life is about seven years. We see this as a multi-decade uh, mining venture here. We will need to do some exploration, which is another reason that we, want to, we wanted to take advantage of uh, the offerings that were out there from an equity pr uh, perspective. So uh, a fair bit of this money is gonna be ear earmarked for uh, exploration and Brian is going to tell you about that. The second thing, the third thing that we want to do is, of course, um, there's a consolidation play for this uh, area, and uh, we want to be able to do some things uh, in uh, in and around this area as the price of the metals continue to increase. So, Mark, you know, just a couple of things, I guess, in terms of comparables with our uh, our peers, kind of thing. Uh, our market cap. Uh, you know, relative to our peers, um, we, we believe we're way undervalued here. And uh, I think that we deserve a bit more respect in the industry uh, than, than what we've got right now. But, uh, you know, uh, as everybody, you know, many times say that uh, you have to show me. So uh, that's what we hope to do here in the next while. And, and we're certainly, uh, you know, where we're headed is we're, we're headed to create shareholder value. Um, you need money to do that, uh, and we're, uh, we're, we're about to do that, to be very honest with you. The, the grade of this um, deposit is very high. Uh, we're at 37 ounces per ton. As you can see here, it's 1,012, and we're the highest of the lot. Uh, we're probably, arguably uh, so, but uh, we're, we're probably one of the highest grades, if not the highest grade mine with a proven and probable reserve. We have a very low cost profile, as you can see on the right, 1071. So we're, uh, we're in a, a very good place. My life at this stage of the game is about seven years, but uh, as I said previously, we see multi-decades here. Uh, this is the uh, share structure as it stands right now. 237 million shares outstanding, uh, fully diluted, we're, we're uh, 327. We do have debt of 28 million now. Uh, and we have a cash balance of around 30 million um, that will grow here in a little bit once we close our current equity offering. Um, just going to talk a little bit about the, the project itself. And uh, now we're, we're, we're drilling down into the weeds here. 
Uh, and Brian, I'm gonna let you talk about this uh, and, and a bit of the history on the project itself, if you would go ahead. Sure, thanks, Kevin. I've been involved in this project since 2015. This was a past producer in 2014, 2015. It's a historic mine and uh, it uh, mostly, most of the production was from the 1880s through 1916. 1916, the mill burned down and the property uh, laid fallow for a number of years. There, there were a number of groups that came into this property since 1916 up until 2011. Uh, Hecla and Ranchers Exploration came in in the 80s, did a significant amount of drilling and development underground. They did do some stoping and ship some ore, uh, but they diluted the ore uh, due to the narrow vein and uh, didn't, didn't probably use the correct mining method at, at the time. Uh, and silver price was uh, was depressed when they shut it down. So, but that uh, that development, that drilling became kind of the core of this feasibility study. There was additional drilling done later, but uh, but the 80s work was was significant. Uh, in the 90s, Sunshine Mining came in. Uh, they did some additional drilling and they uh, rehabbed the portal. But again, they let it go. In 2011, a uh, a company called Star Mining came in. And they really started this off into today's uh, uh, scenario. And then uh, they put about $50 million into the project. They built the mill, they permitted it. Uh, there was an accident at the mine. A, a couple of miners were killed and, and Star Mining uh, decided that they didn't need to be in the mining business anymore. They sold the Fortune Minerals. Fortune Minerals came in, took down a $27 million debt facility with Lascaux Resource Capital. They commissioned the mill. They did produce uh, a, con a, a reasonably good concentrate. Uh, but they uh, they couldn't sustain development. They didn't didn't have their uh, underground development far enough ahead of their stoping, and so you know they just couldn't keep cash flow going. Of course, silver price had dropped off in 2015. Um, and that's about the time that Lascaux defaulted out Fortune, and then I was hired to come in and and see what we could do with this this project. And this this took a number of stages. At first, we took it through a pre-feasibility study in 2016. We did a whack of uh, underground drilling to try to define some additional reserves and, and look at this metallurgical testing, uh, geotech, the, the whole nine yards. Uh, that, uh, that then gave us a kind of a view of what this project could be, but it certainly wasn't the whole story. This needed significant technical work as all projects do. And if you don't spend enough time uh, really looking at these projects, uh, you know, you may not may not understand them well enough. So in 2017, we moved it into a feasibility study, and that feasibility study was uh, significantly better uh, due to some of the drilling and, uh, and other work. Uh, and uh, then, then 2018, we did a second feasibility study as part of our CANA coming in and doing a, a reverse takeover with Lascaux. And that's how this project got vented into, uh, into our, our can of silver. So three study, three major studies, uh, about $25 million was spent really just looking at this project. And that was money well spent. Uh, and then the results of the feasibility study, Kevin had them up there. Kevin, you might wanna go back to that slide just so I can whip through that a little bit. So. Uh, what we ended up with is about 30 million ounces of silver equivalent at an average grade of 30 ounces per ton um, and with proven probable reserves of 21 million of silver and uh, 37 uh, ounces per ton. So quite high grade. It doesn't really tell the story of the mine because there are four structures that have reserves on them, two of which are fairly low grade and they bring down that average. Uh, when we talk about the revenue Virginius, we're really talking about the Virginius vein, which I'll get into in a, in a bit. So first full years of production at 3.1 million ounces per year. I will highlight the fact that that is a, at a 50% D rate on paper for the mill. The mill is designed at 550 tons a day. Uh, on paper during the feasibility study, we uh, we ran the numbers at 270 tons a day, so just right at 50%. And we did that because there were some blending issues that needed to be evaluated later on. And you really do that. Um, this uh, the mill is really constrained by lead concentrate or lead grade. Uh, the mill can run 400, 450 tons a day at 7% lead. There are some stopes in areas of the mine that run as high as 15% lead. So rather than come up with some blending program on paper, we just derated the mill, and that gives some real upside to this mine. So if we can get that blending program really locked down in the first year of production we could see this uh, annualized uh, production rate for silver double. 
So it's really nice to be able to come into a project like this when you're really over promising and you know you have that upside already organically. Uh, silver is the highest revenue stream. It's 71% uh, at the feasibility study numbers of 1850 silver. Of course, we're at 26 uh, silver right now. So th that number is a little higher. It's about 77%. So if you want to go ahead and move on, Kevin. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll talk about the NPV as well. So we're showing 74, 75 million NPV for the feasibility study. Current metal prices kick, kick that up about double. And again, the IRR about the same. It's, it's, a, it's double at today's metal prices. The mill is underground, which is the next slide. Um, it's unique. It's a unique site, uh, very, very steep topography around us. So we really want to get everything underground. There are some, some, some avalanches that come down around the mine, the mine site. So the smaller you can get your footprint, the better off you are. So all, the whole mill is underground. It's currently going through an upgrade. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to put about $8 million into that upgrade. The uh, Brahma Group is on site right now for construction and Bar Engineering is doing the construction management. Bar completed the final design on the mill upgrade. And it's really about increasing flotation capacity and, uh, and removing some bottlenecks in the crushing and grinding circuit that were identified in the previous operation. As you can see, it's a very tidy mine, mine site here as far as a foot, uh, surface footprint. Of course, if it's, a, it's an underground mine, which makes permitting much easier, we are doing an upgrade to the, uh, to the passive water treatment system that is currently in place. That should be commissioned within the next week. It's a five-stage passive water treatment system. The water quality coming out of the portal is quite good, however. It's drinking water quality, very low in metals, but we do have to have some treatment on this in order to discharge under our current discharge permit with the state of Colorado. Um, we are upgrading uh, the rail yard as well. Right now, there's a there's a big building going up over where we're going to park all the trains and dump cars and so forth. And and of course, the mill is underground. So, and we have two uh, two tailings uh, storage facilities. The one in the foreground there is uh, is our current summer storage facility, and we just completed the construction of a winter storage facility, which is off the slide and and towards the uh, towards you. Go ahead and move on, Kevin. All right, so let's get to the meat of this, really. Uh, so this is a very, this is a small portion of our current land package, but it is, it does show the most important. The, the underground workings are accessed through a mile and a half long tunnel. It's called the Revenue Tunnel. It was, uh, it was uh, developed from uh, 1890 through 1895 uh, by uh, by A. Reynolds, who, uh, who owned the mine at that time. Um, so you come in and you come in into what is really the, the core of the project, which is the Virginia Spain. And you can see that there's a number of colors there. We have basically doubled our current uh, land position on the Virginia Spain just within the last year. We did that through two things, which was uh, acquisition of the bluegrass claim, which we drilled this summer, which you can see on the long section down below. And then these uh, yellow or green blocks, those are a fringe lease with the Forest Service. We've added about uh, we add about 1,200 acres of uh, patented mining claims plus another few hundred acres of unpatented. Uh, Colorado is apex rules, so if you stake the apex of the vein where it comes to surface, you own the vein wherever it goes from inline to inline. So you really that's why you see these strings of veins together, the strings of claims together over the vein. So right now, currently, we about 75% of our reserves are on the Virginia's vein. It's the highest grade structure. It averages uh, 40 ounces per ton. It can be as high as 60 ounces per ton in some of the upper stopes. Um, we've added, you know, about 7,000 feet of strike length on the north side of the vein. That's uh, trending to the right. That's that exploration potential we have there. So we've significantly added our ability to uh, to explore this vein, this drilling program that happened this summer. Uh, nice, nice structure, which is what we expected. We have mapped and sampled on the surface. The Virginia's vein had some nice, nice hits. Uh, this this drilling program was really to tie the vein down so that later on we can come in underneath it and drive on level um, on the vein so we can sample it. So overall right now, when you want to put this in perspective, uh, our current reserves plus the historic production of 25 million ounces or 75% of current reserves and, and historic production is in about 4,000 feet of strike length. And we currently have over 16,000 feet of strike length, 7,000 additional feet that we picked up on the north end. So this is a very juicy target. Now, there are some other vein systems in here. And, and the thing about the San Juans of, of Colorado is 
it's not it's not uh, if you can explore, it's where you explore and to be disciplined in your targets. So we're going to focus on, you know, this Virginia's vein. Uh, Kevin mentioned earlier, we want to do some more uh, exploration and development on the Virginia's vein. The market is right for it. So let's let's get out there and see if we can't add some reserves. Uh, we're going to drive out. The vein is zoned. Um, so the higher you are in the system, the more chance of precious metals. Generally, if you're uh, if you're above tunnel level, which is where the portal go goes in, if you're above the tunnel level, you're double the grade than you are below the tunnel level. So we want to stay high in the system. You can see that blue blo blue block that's up high in the system. Those stopes up there uh, that are part of the reserve are averaging 50 to 60 ounces per ton. If you get below the tunnel level, they're averaging more in the 30s. So we want to stay high in, in the system. So there's there's three stages to this project that I that I see, and I've spent five years here, so it's it's been kind of a labor of love. My family's from the San Juan Mountains, Colorado. There's six generations that we've spent here. Um, and it's a prolific region. It's had th uh, four major mines with over 100 years of production. Uh, it's our own sandbox right now. There's nobody else playing in this sandbox. We're the only permitted facility. We're the only uh, facility with a, with a mill, an operational mill. So what we're trying to do is consolidate the district. So the three stages are this, we got to get to production. And uh, right now we're slating production for end of second quarter, start of third quarter. Um, we got COVID going on, you know, we are in a winter construction. We may see that slip, it wouldn't be unexpected. Um, we did have a bit of a COVID hit us uh, end of November where we had to get uh, get further prepared and and uh, and we took we took some time off. It cost us about three to four weeks to our schedule. And we don't expect that to happen again. Most of us have had it and have been through it and down the road, but but there there could be some delays that, that push that uh, target off. So the first stage, let's get to production. Let's try to get to production by uh, by the start of the third quarter. And that's why we have we've got uh, three contractors on site right now, one for the mill and surface facilities, one for this passive water treatment system. And we are doing some underground contracted development as well as we have our own miners. We've got 86 people currently on site. We're running the mine 24 uh, seven and uh, we're doing our own own development. And then we've got some additional help from some contractors on some raises and a hoist installation. The second stage was what I talked about just previously. We want to really focus on the Virginia Spain. It's the highest grade structure. It's produced the most silver ounces in the district. And then the third part of this uh, stage is consolidate the district. San Juan Mountains, uh, this is the northern northwest corner of the San Juans. It's outside the caldera. Um, some of you may know about the Gold King spill. That's inside the caldera, further south towards Silverton. We want to be outside of it because the water quality is uh, is many, many times better than inside the caldera. And we want to consolidate this northwest corner. And so this land package that I'm showing you right now is really that corner. It's the Sneffels Mining District. Um, anything that's in brown, it's a busy slide. It's hard to see. But anything that's in brown, we, we currently owned at the start of the year. We've picked up the bulk of the green claims, which were uh, prior Newmont claims, uh, I Iderado Mining Company, that were deeded back to the Forest Service. We picked those up through two uh, two uh, rules. Uh, one was called the fringe lease law, and uh, that allows us to pick up properties that are right next to us that are deeded to the United States government. And the second was a prospecting permit. So we picked up almost everything in green now that, that's in our area. There are two other or three other uh, properties that, that we are currently in negotiation in, and we want to we want to get uh, get those properties if we can, but we want to we kind of want to wait until after we hit production. Um, and those properties are the Ruby Trust Mine, which is a gold property that was in production in 2017. We've done our due diligence on it. We've done some uh, quite quite a bit of geology on it. We really like it. Uh, it's a quarter mile away from our mill, so it's easy. Uh, the other properties are more accessible from our current underground workings, which are the Orvis claims and the Camperd Mine. The Camperd Mine is a big project. It's a gold mine, ran for 100 years, over, over a million ounces of production, high, high grade. Uh, does have uh, infrastructure there that we really like. We, we have in infrastructure that, uh, it's got two, two tailings ponds that are active that we could add to our tailings capacity. It's got a 10,000 foot uh, completely rehabbed um, underground tunnel that, reach, that intersects the Camperd vein down south. Uh, and uh, it allows us to access reserves that are um, at about 900 feet below our current portal. So, 
just to consolidate all this in, in one fell swoop, it's really get to production. It is to, to continue to explore and develop the, uh, the extensions of the Virginia Spain. And then the longer term goal is let's consolidate the district. Let's get ourselves to a place where this is just not one portal, one mill. You know, if we pick up Camperd as well down the road, we have access to additional vein systems. There's over 30 major structures running through this area. Uh, we have reserves on three or four. Uh, and uh, we really want to we want to really get to the, get this project where it could be a mining complex. And with that, Kevin, I'll I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, and and just to uh, finish up here, just a, a couple of things to summarize. So as as Brian said, that uh, you know our primary focus here, and we do not want to get distracted from it, is get ourselves into production. We're a very short timeline to production. We have a big spend in a very short period, and we need to be on our game for doing that. We do have the Shafter project that we want to uh, take advantage of. Uh, you know, it, it has the ability to produce two and a half to three million ounces a, a year. Uh, and it, as I said, it's fully, uh, fully permitted, uh, 1,500 ton a day mill in place. Uh, but we do need to do a little bit of work. Uh, we, as I said, we don't want to get distracted, but we believe we've got the technical capability to be able to focus a little bit on Shafter, get a drill program going and, and, uh, and so on. Um, so, you know, we're, we're well on our way. Our mill uh, is, uh, is a 500 ton a day mill. Uh, we're starting up at 270. We do have the ability to, to really grow this organically very quickly. Uh, so uh, I think we're in a very good place to take advantage of, uh, of the environment that we're currently in. So with that, I will uh, stop talking. Okay, uh, but uh, I'll uh, keep you going. <laughs> so, um, there's a lot of questions and concerns from the market regarding the recent financing, and so I want to um, share some of those questions and then just summarize some of the sentiments and then give you an opportunity to um, respond in, in, in full. Um, market wasn't happy with recent financing terms. Why a full warrant and such a low? Premium, especially so close to production. Um, why can construct a deleterious funding offer with a devastating impact on shareholders? I haven't seen uh, a deal constructed like this. A little confused about the financing. Um, then um, there was a perception that maybe there was not going to be a financing and that 28 million was enough. So uh, some confusion there. So um, that, <laughs> please respond. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let and me, then let I'll to that. And then why do you feel on top of that, that you're undervalued? So, and then I'll pass this to uh, Stu for more technical questions. Okay, good. Well, first of all, for, for the, uh, we made an announcement not long ago when we closed the $28 million facility that we were fully funded to production and, and we are. We are fully funded to production. That that's sufficient funds with the money that we had on hand to do that. Uh, a couple of things on on the negative side. Um, we're in a situation where Brian Brian said earlier we're in the middle of winter. We don't know what effects the the the, uh, the winter is going to have on us. Uh, in the San Juan Mountains, you've got good years, you've got bad years, uh, but it could uh, shut you down for a week or two or whatever the case may be. So that's one negative. The other negative is COVID. Uh, we don't know what COVID does to us. Uh, we know we had an experience uh, in November and that, uh, you know, shut us down four or five weeks. Now, when you get into and you start looking at the details of all of that and you say, what if, uh, and what if COVID shuts us down? So let's, let's say a two month delay. Let's four and a half million dollars. Four and a half million dollars. I have no control over that. Um, if we don't start up in the time frame that we're in, we lose revenue of about 2.3 million. That's all been to, built into the economics of all of that. So there's things like this that we need to take into consideration. And there's three things that we cannot control. One is the price of silver. We can't control the weather. And we can't control when, when uh, COVID hits us because we take all of the precautions we can possibly take. But the one thing here that we have no control over is what is COVID going to do to us? I also have to make uh, uh, interest payments during this period. 
what if we get delayed in startup and I've got to make a, um, a principal payment? So certainly we do not want to go out to the market and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, take money that's not necessary. But when you go back and you look and you, and you say, what if, then that's a different story. Uh, you need to plan, you know, for the worst and hope for the best. But uh, I do not want to be stuck in the middle of this startup and then have to go back to the market. And the other thing with this uh, um, is I don't ever remember saying that we weren't going to do a, a, a private place. And matter of fact, I've always said we may need to go back to the market to do a little bit more. Uh, so that's the one thing. But on the positive side with this fundraising, uh, we're not looking at the short term here. We're not looking at day trading or, or whatever. We're looking at people that's going to invest in us and is going to stick with us for the long run because we're building a company. We're, we're not just building the revenue of Virginia's mine. We've got uh, Shafter that we need to do some work. Now, if we've got enough money to go into production with the, uh, with the RV mine, but it would be better if we could allocate some funds to Shafter sooner rather than later and take advantage of this high silver price. So we want to be able to get that drill program done. We've done the technical work behind that already. Uh, so that's certainly one of the things. Uh, we want to be able to explore that Virginia thing. Right now, we got a seven-year mine life, and I got beat up severely over the last couple of years because we only had a seven-year mine life. Uh, so with that money that we're bringing in right now, we're going to have the ability to do the exploration on the Virginia thing that uh, Brian alluded to earlier. And in addition to that, you know, the Camp Bird mine, the Ruby Trust mine, these are all very valuable assets for us to acquire. And uh, you need money to be able to do some of that. And we're not going to spend a lot of money. You know, we'll try and do an option deal on some of these, uh, those kinds of things. But uh, we see that as adding a lot of value uh, to this company. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, um, uh, on a go forward basis, this, this is going to add a lot of shareholder value. Uh, um, you know, um, to yeah. the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if Kevin, if you could put up a slide um, in your deck, so something to look at and we can. Can you see that? Slide. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then were there, might there have been better deals? Um, what was, is this what the market was going to bear, a full warrant and all that? And any thoughts on? Yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, you know, there, there's we're a narrow vein uh, mining company. Uh, there's there's still a lot of disbelievers out there that we can perform on this. If you look at where we we price the uh, the shares, uh, you know, uh, our 30 day uh, VWAP on this was a dollar a dollar three. So if you look at it that way, it was a three percent discount to the market. And that included the last few days just before we, we announced the deal where we had tremendous volume. Uh, if you look at it just on a December basis, you know, we were 96 cents. So to try and place this deal, um, uh, you know, at a higher price, uh, then that would be problematic. Uh, I, we see anyhow. Uh, so uh, we, we thought we priced it in the right place. Uh, gives people an opportunity to to uh, get in, and uh, I, I think we're all going to make money. Uh, just a little bit of patience is required here, and uh, I, I think going forward, um, th this is really part of building the company. Okay, thank you, and we're going to change the subject now. Uh, Stuart, uh, moving forward with... Yeah, questions. thanks for the presentation, Brian and Kevin. Um, and then, so on the, on the RV mine, so the mill's going to produce two different concentrates. The traffic Europe is going to purchase. Is that right? That's correct. correct yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a five-year uh, uh, off-take agreement with traffic. Got it. And Put then, up a slide back. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the final concentrate. They've done full analysis. They know what you know. All the elements are in there. Any penalties, etc. It's all finalized. Yeah, all, all of that is finalized. We have a reasonably clean concentrate, yeah. uh, you know, contrary to other areas in, uh, you know, Mexico and other places where we don't have high arsenic. We do have a, a bit of antimony in there, but for the most part, this, this is a pretty good concentrate. The premium, a, it's a premium lead con. Right. And then the last box sample, how many tons did you guys do? Is that? Uh, they take sample? all the production for that five-year period. 
Yeah, and okay. we, we have the ability, the ability to renegotiate on an annual basis the terms. Got it. Given the strong like precious metals market, are you finding it hard to you know get staff? Now you're ramping up, you know, operation, you know, activities at site. We're we're fully staffed. Um, Got it. Yeah, we just we just hired our uh, the last major position that we needed to fill was uh, was the mill manager position. Yep. And we uh, and he came on board uh, on Monday. Ian Larkins is his name. He came out of uh, Nevada Copper. Got it. Right. And you know, I know the the mining methods being something you guys have, you know, tweaked and I guess perfected from previous operators. Um, if you could comment on that and how labor intensive it may or may not be. Yeah, I mean, so the historic mining method for this project from in the 1800s and early 1900s was Rasu, and and that's not a, a it's not as commonly known. I mean, there are a number of of different. Uh, mining companies out there that use it, Great Panther, Corey Concha. I mean, they're they're it's used around the world, not so much in North America. North America's tended to turn to more mechanized mining. Uh, this is a very very narrow vein. The Virginia vein is the narrowest of the bunch. Um, it'll average a uh, foot and a half wide, um, and so the mining method is very important. And uh, I mentioned in my in the presentation that you know Hecla and Ranchers Exploration took a shot at this in the 80s, and they they tried to use the shrink a shrink stoking method, which is used, you know, more commonly cer certainly used up in Silver Valley, um, where you uh, where you shrink the ore down and sta stand on the ore as you move up, and that and that works great for a four a three four five six foot wide vein, like some of the other veins we have the the Atlas Cumberland's 10, 10 foot wide shrink stoping would be perfect there but not for the Virginia Spade, which is the highest grade structure. And so we, we took a step back um, as part of the pre-feasibility study and said, what is the proper mining method here? And we put in a test stope and said, let's try this. Let's see, let's see if we can take today's technology and apply it towards the Rasu mining method. And we did that. We did it in 2016, 17, 18, 19. We even did another shot at it this last year into 2020, really to define what's gonna be our dilutions. It is not, uh, uh, it is very, well, it's very similar to shrink where you split, instead of shooting ore and waste together, standing on it to take the next pass and then pulling out some a little bit down below in order to create the working room, you basically split shoot the ore. You shoot the ore, you uh, on, on the conveyor belt, you muck it out. And then you move uh, from uh, th then you go ahead, roll up your conveyor belt, crib up your openings and then shoot, shoot your waste and stand on it. So it's a it's a two step process where shrink stopes a single pr process. Um, it works. Our dilution was less than 20 percent. We've taken three slices on the test stope, eight foot high. Um, the swell has been perfected. Um, yeah, there's going to be some operational issues that are going to crop up, but as far as the mining method, I think we've we've got that handed down. It is labor intensive. This is, but so is shrink stove. So it's just really about finding the finding the miners. We currently have about 45 miners on site. We need a total of 80 at full production. Got it. Thanks. And so on those, like, what are the, what are the average size of the mining stopes and projected dilution? Yeah. The, the, so one of the nice things, that the, the, and there's a whole slide pack that's uh, on the Arcana website related to the mining. You know, we actually evaluated other mining methods, and and dilution's not the only issue here. You know, if you shrink it, you uh, you have to take it four feet wide. If you're if you're in an average vein width of 18 inches, you know that dilution's pretty high. Um, so Rasu actually beats any other mining method uh, on dilution uh, that we've that we evaluated, including cut and fill. Um, when you one of the nice things though is you only have an eight foot opening at any one point. Um, if you shrink a vein, you have to pull it out, and you have a big wide opening, and it really constrains you from a geotech standpoint. So um, these stopes for Rasu are 500 feet long by 300 feet high. They're big blocks of ore that you can mine. It minimizes development. Uh, over time. So if you have shrink stoping, your uh, the blocks that you can mine, the stope blocks you can mine are 100 by 170. So there's significant more development in any other type of mining method than Rasu. So, and the number is, uh, for life of mine, the number is three times the cost of development for shrinkage versus Rasu. Okay, thanks. Just quick one on, you know, back to the offtake and production. Um, 
you know, would you have to touch on any hedge program that you might have in place? Uh, let me talk about that one. Uh, yes, as part of the financing, there is a hedge program uh, in place. Uh, it uh, it runs over the life of the um, uh, of the uh, the debt facility, which is five years. Uh, it's uh, about 29% of our production of our silver production, uh, right, right around 3.2 million ounces. We haven't announced the uh, the uh, t the actual terms of the hedge itself. Uh, there's no margin call on the hedge uh, position. Uh, you know, we're we're in the uh, the the, the mid 20s for the uh, for, for the hedge itself for the the downside. But you know, it's in place to cover the downside just in case uh, we're unexposed. Uh, you know, we're we're exposed to the to the uh, the daily um, um, price of silver. So you know, if most of our 70% of our production we're going to get paid at the spot price on a go forward basis. But um, yeah, and the debt facility itself, just to touch on that, it's 28 million. It's a 12-month yeah, uh, grace period on that. We do pay interest in it. Our first uh, principal payment is, uh, you know, next December. Uh, it's a five-year term. Uh, the interest rate drops to 10.5%, I think, upon commercial production, achieving 400 tons a day, uh, uh, 400 tons a month, I guess it is, for uh, concentrate. So. Uh, it's prepayable anytime without penalty after the first 12 months. Okay, thanks. I'll pass it on to Artie. Thank you. Uh, what are your flotation tailings and any environmental concerns or further treatment for, for fl flotation tailings? No, uh, our, our tailings are benign. Um, and and, and uh, one of the interesting points about this is in 2017, I really looked at this uh, at the tailings capacity and and can we create byproducts here um you know that uh, that also have value uh, 100% of our waste is currently sold or uh, donated to the count to Uray County for road base and so we permitted through the through the state of Colorado the ability to actually mix our mix tailings with uh, with our waste rock and uh, and sell it and uh, you know, I figured we can get rid of 30 to 40 percent of our tailings in that fashion. Again, we had to go through all the testing, uh, SPLP tests, and there's a process that we go through with the state in order to do that. But it, it really, uh, it really highlights the fact that these are very benign tailings. Um, you know, it doesn't doesn't do you any good to ship your metal out to the tailings pond. So we're looking at 95, 96 percent recovery on lead, on silver, on zinc, uh, um, and on copper which we do, we do have a bit of copper and there is a copper circuit designed for this mill. It's just, we don't have enough copper in the current uh, mining areas to turn that system on. Uh, later on, we will, if we get into the Atlas Cumberland, that's gonna run two, two to 3% copper. So we'll probably turn that circuit on. There Thank are you. no other environmental issues. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll highlight one more thing. And that is uh, we've been doing, this is a historic mining area. So there is some, there is some heritage there that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, and so we've been partnering with Trout Unlimited on a number of uh, of cleanups around us, not on our properties actually. Uh, we just finished one this year on the Atlas Tailings, which is right ne next to us. It's Forest Service land, and we put three hundred fifty thousand dollars into a cleanup to clean up a historic tailings uh, pile with Trout Unlimited, and we got full super super fund good Sam on uh, on that with Trout Unlimited from the EPA. Thank you. Uh, how long is the ramp up period and um, how how smooth uh, ramp up period you're expecting? Well, the mills run before. Uh, it is there are some additional circuits to this and additional flotation capacity, but it's run before the ball mills run before the crushing circuits run before. We're doing some some modifications. We're streamlining the process. We did take out the hydrocyclones and put in screens. Our uh, our grind point is uh, 130 microns, so it's actually quite coarse. Um, but we expect uh, right now about a three month ramp up. We expect to, uh, you know, to commission the mill sometime in uh, wet, wet commission the mill in, in uh, June, May, May or June, and then uh, start, start putting a uh, low grade ore through it uh, sometime shortly thereafter. Uh, and then, uh, then you'll, be, you'll be in the stopes underground and you'll start shipping some of the higher grade product out there. So a three month ramp up is uh, I think adequate for this mill since it's run before. Um, and I'm hoping that we can beat that. And I fully expect that we should. I know, I know Kevin thinks that we can beat it. And, 
you mentioned some uh, unexplored veins in the in the uh, project area or close to the project area when we think like five six years ahead of the production uh, do you think having an underground mill will be a disadvantage for for future long future well uh, yes um you know when you uh, create an underground mill you have limited space so you know we have the excess capacity right now right so we're on paper we're saying 270 tons a day three million ounces a year and you got 50 percent excess capacity so we're going to find a way to fill that excess capacity and that might be the ruby trust um that excess capacity is really tied to lead grade the ruby trust is a gold fluorite vein with very low uh, sulfide so adding that ore into uh into this mill allows us to go right up to probably 500 500 550 tons a day uh, at that point you know expanding this mill is 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 problematic you'd have to go blast out new areas underground which can be done it's not something that you you couldn't do but you know maybe the longer term goal would be to go ahead and finish the acquisition of campbird and have that property next to you it has a mill site there was a mill there in the 80s uh, got uh, dismantled and shipped to mongolia but you could build a mill right there put it on site you could uh, you could have two access points to the underground workings um and uh and you have numerous structures so maybe you're looking at you know five six years from now maybe you're looking at uh a thousand fifteen hundred ton ton a day mining complex with two mills two sets of tailings ponds and multiple access points to you know over 30 major structures that's the long-term goal it, it can be realized i think kevin touched on why we raised some some additional money i think it's uh i, I think the faster we can consolidate the the district since we're the only game in town the better off that we're going to be for shareholder value thank you brian and campbell Sure. So, uh, some fun questions that have come in, and um, I'll ask them uh, one after the other, and uh, then we'll move to the next one. Um, what are the biggest hurdles and steps that need to be knocked down to get to production? And uh, he comments, great resource, ore body, and staff, exclamation point. <laughs> well, it's a good time there. <laughs> I, I think right now we've got most of them out of the way. Uh, you know, we, we've pretty much bought all of our equipment. Um, it's arriving within the next, uh, I guess, five to six weeks, four to six weeks. Uh, we should have everything on site. The mill is destined for commissioning uh, first uh, few weeks of May. Uh, so it'll be completed and, uh, you know, we'll have it commissioned and ready to go before the underground is, uh, is, uh, is done. What we have to do right now is we have to get the infrastructure underground installed uh the critical path is our number one raise which is uh, gives us the ability to put a an elevator or a hoist whatever whatever you want to call it uh in there so we can move many materials up and down and access the various levels to be able to so that's the critical path but uh, as it stands right now um you know the one thing that can hurt us is what i mentioned before which is the uh snow uh, winter conditions or if we get hit with COVID. Yeah, okay. that's the biggest the biggest roadblock here right now is just winter conditions. I mean, I would have preferred that we go into construction in the summer. It's a lot easier to find materials that you put on the ground, but uh, you, sometimes you don't pick pick the time frame. So construction is going to be slower than it would have been in the in the summer. Um, we do have avalanches that we have to mit mitigate amount around the mine site and on the road to the mine site. Uh, last year, we we didn't have any avalanches hit the road, so we didn't have to plow back into the mine site. But each winter is different, and we may get a delay or two there. That is fully con con uh, contained. Those those potential uh, delays uh, in, in are contained in our economics and the feasibility study. We only assume that we're going to be operating about 327 days a year um, for that reason. So, you know, the ag economics reflect the fact that uh, we may get delayed. And so if we get into a point where we have, you know, three weeks of snowfall here and we have to mit mitigate, it may delay us, you know, a couple weeks uh, on this construction, but it's, it's expected. And so w now we know and we can, we can plan for it. Oh, and again, can we expect the drilling results from the summer campaign? Um, we, we haven't put them out uh, just yet. I mean, we were mainly drilling for structure there, and uh, that's what we uh, that's what we wanted to do. Uh, there, you know, the, the drilling uh, um, 
itself is no blaze of glory, but we expected that at the end of the day. But what we wanted to do was to establish where is the vein, uh, because in this type of environment, you drill for structure and you drift for grade. Yeah. So that, what, uh, what what we're going to be doing over the next several months uh, as part of this, uh, you know, developing the Virginia's vein is driving out on the structure. Now that we know where that vein is and in, is there there's these veins have these sigmoid loops that come in and out you need to tie them down you need to understand what you're drip what you're drifting on so you drill out there you establish the structure and then you go ahead and drift out on them and that is typical for this mine specifically in the virginia's vein you just don't get a large sample when you drill an 18 inch wide structure right and it's uh so it's problematic it'll it'll be high it'll be low I mean, uh, in 2016, we uh, we drilled out, we dr had a drilling program where we knew the vein was, and we got some 350 ounce hits, you know. And uh, is that what it's going to be? No, it's going to be something different. So you really have to drift out there on on vein, and that where we're going to be starting that uh, short shortly to drive out underneath where we did the drilling. Okay, um, your deck states a very supportive major shareholder who why who might that be why so supportive and then just in general could you go over your uh your your management ownership and uh your institutional ownership and management ownership yeah uh, the um uh Lascaux resource capital is our major shareholder they currently sit at about uh 37 percent uh, management sits somewhere in around 3%. I don't have the exact number with me, uh, but uh, we we all uh, own uh, you know a, a reasonable chunk of uh, of the company itself. The um, what was the other part, uh, Campbell, of the of the question? Oh, just, uh, you, you, how much does management have? Yeah, we're we're at about 3% of the company. Okay. Uh, avalanches? Is that an issue? <laughs> <laughs> I think I hit that, but it is. Yeah, okay. um, you know, we have we we uh, we forecast and, and mitigate for avalanches um, to go to access the road. Really, it's it's um, the, it's a county road that goes up to the mine site at uh, it's seven miles long at three and a half miles by uh, uh, with a permit from the county and with the Forest Service. We close the road off in the winter because there is avalanche danger. And then we have hired uh, San Juan Mountain Guides to be our avalanche forecasters. They're on, they're up there every day. We've got a weather station that's right on top of one of the peaks uh, below us, so we can we can really get some good information. Uh, and every day we get an avalanche forecast. And and right now we're under a green. There's no avalanche danger. And uh, as we get more snow, that may creep up to a red. And uh, we may have to actually have to uh, close the road off until we mitigate those avalanches. We go up there. We either put a helicopter in the air with with helitrax out of Telluride um, and bomb them, or we have an avalancher as well, which shoots a projectile into into various areas. So we can mitigate those, make sure everybody's in a safe spot, and then go back to work. Uh, moving on to Shafter for a moment, ASIC and silver ounces, et cetera. Say again, Campbell. ASIC for silver ounce for Shafter. I think uh, the the resource on Shafter is just under uh, 20 million ounces. Okay. Uh, oh, and sustaining oh, and sustaining cost is a little higher than revenue. It's uh, I think it's 12 or so. Yeah, yeah. It'd be about two to two and a half million ounces of production, um, all in sustaining cost of uh, yeah, it's uh, something like 12 to 14, I believe, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's that. that's a PEA, and they're notoriously bad PEAs. So that's why we're moving to a feasibility study. We've got a drilling program designed. We'd really like to kick that off shortly. That's part of the raise because uh, we need some infill drilling, and then move this thing into a feasibility study by third quarter, and really have a better understanding of that deposit. And uh, Val Pratico, our chief geologist, is really heading that up right now. And Val's. Val's a grizzled veteran in the uh, exploration business. Thank you. Uh, Stu had uh, some final questions. Yeah, just uh, want to touch some more on Shafter. I know it's kind of been tucked away in the presentation at the back over the last you know period of time, <laughs> whilst you've been focused in Colorado. So just you know, plans this year. What's the exploration budget? What are you going to be doing at Shafter? And 
but we haven't we don't have approval just yet from the board to do any of the of the things but we put a program together and and uh, you know we're going to have to look at the use of funds uh but uh Basically, I think it's about a, an $850,000 program that we see right now for the drilling program itself. You know, on top of that would be some money for uh, for a, um, uh, a feasibility study. Brian, I, I think you can add a little bit more color to that, right? Yeah, so um, so the Shafter deposit uh, was was really developed by Goldfields back in the 80s. And, and it, there's two parts to the Shafter story. One is Presidio, which was the historic workings and then there's the shafter deposit the gold fields put a shaft down did quite a bit of development drilled it out we really like the shafter part because it's it's virtually untouched there has been no stoping in that area at all so uh so we really need to tie that down and one of the things that we saw in the pea which was quite interesting is the pea didn't really bring in the gold credits uh which which we've got some hits out there of quarter ounce or or better in shafter so we really want to tie those down and and uh, put the infill drilling in that's a, that's as kevin said it's eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for the drilling program again no no board approval yet to, to move forward with that uh and then you know you're going to follow up with uh, starting the feasibility study so that could be another you know seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to a million but that should be after production at the revenue virginia so, you know the drilling program might be prior to that might be um it depends on the board approval and then uh and we but we'd like to complete that as sooner rather than later to move move the technical side of shafter along as fast as possible and we really need to get through a feasibility study to lock down those numbers yeah. And the, uh, the the capex uh, as per the PEA for Shafter was about twenty million dollars, twenty two million, I think it was. So not a lot of money, but yeah. mostly all development and drilling. And is it also narrow vein mining there? No, it's no. a uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a manto. It's, it's a replacement or or body. It's virtually all silver. There's a little bit of sulfides to it, but it's mostly oxide. Got it. It's deep mining, Stuart. The you know room and pillar, right? Room and pillar. Yeah, and what, how's the quality of the infrastructure in place um, from you know past operations? Excellent. Down <laughs> uh, a Presidio is I don't know ten miles away. Marfa is thirty-seven miles away. Road goes right by it, basically right through it. Yeah. Uh, the mill is there. It's fifteen hundred ton a day mill. It's it's in excellent condition. We have three guys down there that do you know environmental. We've maintained all of our permits. We have the power is still turned on. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and uh, it's, uh, you know, with some underground development and that pre-production work that Brian uh, talked about, the uh, feasibility study, we wouldn't want to go back at this thing without doing the feasibility study. So, yeah. but we're in good shape. Yeah, it, it, holding costs are 440000 a year all in. That includes the three guys and permitting and everything. So really easy to hold. Right. And is it permitted above 1,500 tons per day or that's... It is. Yeah. 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 Yep. Right. Well, thanks. That's all for me, for Campbell. Um, yes. Uh, are you permitted to increase with additional mill? Yes. Uh, where basically? Uh, are we? Revenue? Are we? If, are we permitted to build another mill? No. In Colorado, we, yeah, and to increase uh, production. But we can increase production to the mill throughput. We're on. We have a 112D, which virtually doesn't have any uh maximums on our throughput at this point um not that you know maybe if you've started looking at three four thousand uh, you'd get you, you'd get some questions from the state but uh where we're at right now we can we can run that run our current mills at uh, whatever capacity we can get out of it um how difficult would it be to re-permit the mill at the camp bird uh is that an issue uh relevant well yeah, I mean, I think there's, uh, I think, you know, I've uh, been in Colorado uh, since 1997. Um, my family's from here, as you know, and I've permitted a number of different properties in Colorado. And I think there's a mis uh, misapprehension, uh, understanding of, of Colorado permitting. It's not as hard as people think. I mean, the star mining group that permitted the Revenue Virginias did that in less than two years. That included the mill and the tailings ponds. So it's a fairly rapid process. Um, I've permitted elsewhere in the world, including up in Yellowknife, and that's a long, arduous process. Of course, when you're dealing with an underground mine with a small footprint, there's only a couple things you really need to worry about. One of them is water quality. 
you know, that's, uh, that's, that's probably the most important thing that you have to deal with. And when you're dealing with outside of the caldera and the San Juans, you're dealing with really good water quality. Still have to get a discharge permit, still have to have some sort of, some treatment. Again, we're running passive treatment at the uh, Revenue Virginias because I really didn't want to deal with perpetual water treatment uh, long-term. So we put in a passive treatment system. It's good for debt, for, for uh, current operations. And then it's just going to stay in place post operations for reclamation. Okay. Um, and um, could you give some more background on to the relatively lower, uh, the relatively low management um, participation? That was a concern of the three well, percent. Well, ma management's just coming on board. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, I, I, three of us in the company up till uh, very, very recently, right? And yeah. uh, so, I, you know, uh, it's um, people participate within their means. That's that's uh, so. But uh, you know, in this, um, uh, do you have uh, I guess uh, options that are you can publicly disclose? Options? Uh, yeah, we have five million options outstanding. Um, hmm for the whole company. So we've not loaded up anybody with options. Nobody has a change of control agreement, including myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've been good stewards of the company, I think, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the, the share allocations and things like that. So uh, what people own, they own, uh, you know, came out of their own pocket. Yeah, management, senior management uh, is all, uh, a good portion of us are all jumping in on this private placement. Is there any uh participation left or is that it's closed pretty much no we're done yeah we're done i, I thought so yeah. but uh, some people were asking actually <laughs> so, um anyway great great guys uh i want to thank everyone for tuning in we'll be queuing you for uh feedback um what you haven't sent in um feel free to send again or uh don't make its way to management uh believe me and um you know, follow Arcana Silver on LinkedIn and Twitter. Find Brian and and Kevin uh, and as well there, and uh, keep up there. And you can also follow Invest Capital and and us individually on in these places. And um, with that, a, a a closing statement. You've said it. I covered very well why buy now, but um, just in case that people miss that, why buy now. Well, I I, uh, I really think that we're just at the beginning of this uh, silver bull yeah. market. We're, we're well positioned. Uh, you know, we're coming into production six months uh, to production. That that's amazing in today's world. We're probably the only one, and we're looking at being a mid-tier producer. You know, we're not looking at just three million ounces a year. We're looking at eight million ounces a year uh, in the very near future. So I, I think we're well undervalued at this stage of the game. We're positioning ourselves well for. Uh, uh, our re-rate that we hope to get uh, when we get ourselves into production. Excellent. And uh, how? what's the best way to reach you guys? Uh, 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 email. Do you have a, a closing page with that information? Uh, let me just see. I'm not sure. We, um, let me show about it. What's the best email to uh, start a conversation with you? Uh, call uh, with me specifically or with us as a company? Um, um, at, at info um, at orcana.com. Info at orcana.com. Excellent. Um, and thank if you want my my uh, my um, uh, email is kdrover at orcana.com. Excellent. Um, and you can also reach out to us uh, as well, and we'll make sure to get your message. Sure. In front of All right. Thank you, everyone. And good thank day. you. Have a great weekend. Thank you.